we have studied um, genomic changes in myeloma. Now, we, we were part of this larger study, which is better known as IFMDFCI study, where patients were randomized to getting RVD or they get RVD with high dose melphalan and transplant. And the results have clearly shown that patients who get high dose chemotherapy with transplant has better PFS, progression free survival, um, by at least 15 months. And there was an update of that study in this ASH where this difference was around 12 months. Um, now, what we did was when the patients following either of the regimen eventually relapse, we collected myeloma cells then and we had myeloma cells at the time of their diagnosis. And we compared that how is the genomic makeup of myeloma changes at relapse in those who got transplant versus those who do not got transplant. And what we reported is that patients who relapse after transplant has significantly increased mutational burden. There are 6,000 more mutations per patient compared to those who did not get transplant where the increase was 2,000. And this is very important. It suggests that patients who may relapse from transplant may have a greater mutational burden. Now, its significance, we still need to study. Does it mean it's a bad myeloma? Does it mean it's a resistant myeloma? We don't have the good data on that. However, it is a good first start showing that hydros melphalan may lead to myeloma with increased mutational burden. It could also be that there are increased number of clones, and we have to keep that in mind. Um, there was multiple other things presented in this context. Um, importantly, the point being raised was that what drives this, and there are signatures being described, um, which we call melphalan-related signatures. So because of melphalan, certain DNA damage happens, and that leads to um, acquisition of those new changes. We did not observe the increase in translocations. So it's mainly mutational and small indels which had predominantly changed. And so we have to keep in mind um, that these changes can occur and we may need to devise methods to either prevent these additional changes, but also very importantly, we need to study what does increased mutations mean. So this was the first report that suggested this impact of melphalan, and now there will be great interest in understanding its implications.